Look how utterly, spectacularly beautiful this creature is. It is an iridescent sort of starling purple green with orange underneath and Herbert found it. I don't know what it's called. I've seen it in the book. Isn't that wonderful? It's a little beetle, as far as I'm aware. And it's got sort of iridescent turquoise parts to the leg and iridescent stripe underneath the purple. And it was living, typically, on the Waltheria bush, which of course is a great deliverer of wonderful things. And I'm sorry that it is m sitting in amongst the hairs on my hand, which are inescapably unattractive, but it's a really good way of hampering the thing's movement. So it just struggles to move around when it's in amongst all that hair. Otherwise they just scuttle around too much. Ah. Now take care, you say, is it possible to tell the difference in bug sexes? Now I don't know if you mean bug in the biological term, so from the order Hemiptera, or if you mean creepy crawlies in general. If you mean in general, yes, some. Certainly amongst the spiders, uh, obviously many of the males are smaller than the females, so that's easy. Amongst the uh, things like fireflies, the males are often flightless and the females can, f no, other way around, males can often fly, females often can't. And that's the same with the mantis species. It can be the same with a few of the um, stick insect species as well. But something like dung beetles, very difficult. In fact, I think just about all the beetles, you'll struggle to tell the difference. So it really does depend on what kind of creepy crawly you're talking about. In terms of the biological bugs, so the order Hemiptera, of which this is not one, I don't think. I think this is a Coleoptera or a beetle. Um, I think you'll find it's quite difficult to tell the difference between different sex bugs. As far as I'm aware, I can't think of one where it's obvious.